And maybe me and you should go to the studio soon and try to figure out how hey, we can listen, get us some. Call me, I'll be there. Not no pun intended, but just call no, me, I'll be, <laughs> I'll be there. I'll be there. Hello, hello. I'll just pick up there. your phone, baby. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, you're inside the GGN rocking with your host with the most, Finding Nemo, a.k.a. Nemo Holes, and I got a special guest on the show, the one and only Jermaine Jackson. Close my eyes. Hey! See, we just chopping game right now, you know what I'm saying? I got to shoot a shout out to the one and only Archbishop Don Magic Wand because he did make this happen. He been pushing to get my main man Jermaine on the show for the longest and we finally sitting at the table chopping up some real game going over this historic <clears throat> career of his. So tell us about the water that you got right there because I understand that's that, that's that alkaline water. Yeah, this is called Vita Water. I'm, I'm a partner along with my wife and, and our partner in San Francisco. This is Vita Water is naturally alkaline from the Sierra Mountains in Nevada. It has n no additives, it's, it's all n natural. And um, it's just coming right off the rocks, right into the bottom. Can I have some? Shoot, I'm, I'm, well, we brought this for you. We're in Whole Foods, we're in Safeways, we're in UCLA. We, we've been out for more than a year, and we, uh, we're, we're growing fast, very, very, very fast. This is so good for you because... Um, mm, it's running all down the side of my mouth. It's so good to me. <laughs> What's great about this water is when you purchase the water, we build wells. We have 18 wells in the world. And um, the fact that we provide clean water to people who don't have, because there's so many deaths every year from children who are drinking water that mm -hmm. it, it, it creates all, all kinds of diseases. So we have 18 wells. We have 16 in Afghanistan and two in Ethiopia. Wow. We have a name on the wells and each well provides water for a thousand people for 20 years. So our plan is to get up to a hundred thousand wells. And in that way the whole world will be taken care of and keep yeah. it reproducing over and over again. <laughs> now, man, I gotta ask you, man, how was it Growing up in the house with your brothers, man, I know that. I mean, a lot of people see that side, but they never heard your side. It had to be fun, man, growing up with all them brothers in the house like that. Snoop, growing up in Gary, Indiana, our house was the size of a two-car garage, not even that big. And I can't believe, we had one bathroom. Uh, Tito and I slept at the top, Michael and Marlon slept in the middle, and Jackie was at the bottom getting all the showers. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but that was home, man. And, and we had a washing machine that we would pull out in the middle of the floor, and this washing machine would make this noise. It's, it's kind of one one of those kinds that had the the rollers where you, mm -hmm. you stick, old school. where you stick your finger in there, you get smashed yeah, up. That's that old school. And Michael used to stand by the washing machine, and it made this kind of beat. And he was in his diaper, sucking his bottle, and he was just shaking to the beat of the washing machine. My, my mother used to watch him. She said, "He's got rhythm." But just growing up there, and my father. He was always on us. We actually learned everything in those days, how, how to iron. I still press my own clothes mm -hmm. to this day, how to wash, how to paint the house, how to do, do the lawn, all this stuff. That's, that's what was growing up in Gary, Indiana, 2300 Jackson hands Street. On. Yeah, it was hands-on experience. Yeah, so we had a mother and father who really cared for us. We had to be in before the street lights were on. And, mm. and, you too? And, and all, all that kind of stuff, <laughs> and running across the field, try, try trying to get to home before them lights, <laughs> before the lights was on. And, but that was home, and that's what really got us grounded. When we came from Gary out to California, my father was so concerned about keeping the family together. Mm -hmm. And when we looked at us ourselves like an oak tree, my father and mother, the roots and the different branches were each family member. Mm -hmm. When we hit Hollywood, the managers, the agents, the lawyers, they all didn't look at the tree as the beauty as a whole. They wanted to They separate. wanted to pick out of the tree. They wanted to pick out of the tree. So they took Michael's branch, they took Janet's branch, mm -hmm, and, they, and mm -hmm. we eventually ended up on different labels. So they split us up. Mm. And, and so my father's whole thing was stay together. We even remember when he, when we were starting, he, he took one stick and he broke it. And he said, now, if you stay together, he took five sticks and he tried to break them and he couldn't break them. He said, oh, so you wow. stay together or you can be broken mm -hmm. by yourself. So we knew this, and this is why he, he gets a bad rap to this day, because he's always skeptical But I look at him people. as like a football father. Yeah. Someone who's coached their son in football, and their son finally made it to the NFL, and you see this great NFL player mm -hmm. become this great athlete, and you say, well, the father was the, 
the backbone to it all. It's just so different because of the time right. that he was doing it in. It was the yeah. time, that the things that y'all was going through. We still was going through segregation and going through all uh -huh. of that when y'all was creating this move right here. Well, I'll, I'll tell you something, but it has been something. You never forget where you come from. Do you know when we were starting out, Michael wasn't in the group. Michael and Marlon were, were, they were running, too young. running around with two, two young. So Tito, Jackie, and I thought we were the Isaac Brothers. We were in there <laughs> singing Isaac Brothers songs and Motown songs. But this young thing. Yeah, yeah. All that. And, 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 uh, but, but see, Tito was sneaking in the closet playing my father's guitar. And he broke the stream. And, and see, my, my father would say, I don't want y'all touching my guitar when I go to work. Don't touch my guitar. And so Tito would sneak it out the closet, and my mother would know it. And she would say, baby, your father's coming back. Like, hurry up and, and put it you, back up. Hurry up and put it back. And one day, he broke a string. And that was it, boy. And so my, my father threw the guitar at Tito's life and said, First, first he said, who broke my string on my guitar? We all got afraid because he was those kind of fathers. He can look at you and, and make that, you cry. And that's enough to look yeah, at you. Yeah, yeah. So, that's how my mom used to do. <laughs> he had a cold look. Really? Yeah. yeah. So Tito said, I was playing it, and he was crying at the same time. So my father said, well, show me what you know how to play. So Tito started playing, and we started singing this, this Motown stuff, man, making harmony. From that point on, he started taking money that's supposed to have been to repair the house, putting it to us with equipment and this and that. And so Michael and Mar Michael was just wanting to be in the group. And we said, you're too young. And all of a sudden, my, my mother's mother said, let him in the group. Let him sing. Oh, your grandma said that? Yeah, let him sing. We put him in the group, and it was over. It he, was magic. Yes, because I was the lead singer first. And then Michael came in. So what, what Motown did, they had his voice, the high voice, the mind to the, to mm, the your strength like voice. The yeah. So... He started, but he was playing bungles first on the Quaker oak boxes, oatmeal boxes. He had the two the brown two boxes, ones, yeah, yeah the, and he had a pencil stuck between them, and he was beating the bungles while we were singing. Oh, like, I'm going to be yeah. in the group. <laughs> yeah. You're not leaving me out of this yeah. shit. I'm, I'm going to be in the group. <laughs> but, but when he started singing, and he started watching James Brown and Joe Tex and all these people, and and Sammy Davis and Jackie Wilson, mm. it was over. He, he could watch something and do it, and that's how he patterned himself. But I, I feel that now that you're saying that, y'all was his inspiration, but the people he was seeing gave uh -huh. him his personality. Yeah, yeah. You feel what I'm saying? So he, yeah. had to, he had to figure out how could I be in the group and not be what the group is, but give the group what we don't mm -hmm. have. I'm mm -hmm. watching James Brown and Jackie Wilson and all Ooh. these bad Incredible. Get up there and do what yeah. they do. I want to do that. Because I remember seeing him as a little kid and seeing Mike, little Michael. He danced like James Brown and Jackie Wilson. That's who he wanted to be. Yeah. See, see, we all have somebody who we want to be. We want to be Sly and the Family Stone, The Temptations, mm. this and then that one. That's who we, we grew up they listening to. They were our role to. models. They were yeah. our heroes. Yeah. Still to this day, but there's no music like that. So you, in, and what was the biggest the, Jackson 5 song? Was it ABC or I'll Be There For You? I'll Be There. Who wrote that? I'll, I'll be there, Barry Gordy and uh, a few other people. The corporation wrote a lot of our music, which was Barry Gordy, Funz Meisel, Deke Richards, and Freddie Perrin. They called themselves the corporation. Then there was Hal Davis with Dance Machine and all the automatic, systematic, Man. full of color, self-contained. Ooh, bop, doo, bop. <laughs> Ooh, bop. Did and Willie Hutch write a song for y'all? Yeah, he wrote a lot of music for us. Willie Hutch did, and uh, I got to be there for you. Uh, got to be there, got to be there. Yeah, great, great stuff. But see, it's so many songs. Like I'll hear the music, and I say, did we do that? Because we were recording. We would come home from school, get enough time to eat, do homework, go to the studio. We go to the studio. We knock out two songs and come back. That went on for years and years. Two songs a day. Yeah, two songs a day, and then. But two hit records a day. Not like a lot of you. <laughs> People in the studio just making a bunch of mess. <laughs> Two hit records a day, and we had Brother Joe Jackson making show. Cracking the wheel. You hear me? That ain't a hit record. Get back in there. <laughs> we need this hit record, man. That's foundation, man. I, I mean, I love that 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 love because, like uh -huh. I say, you don't understand that until you have kids. Yeah. On how how tough it is to stay on, especially when you got a. a, a, a a variety of kids, different personalities. So you gotta have that iron fist. And then mm -hmm. mom gotta be the silk. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? It's That's gotta how be she that. Was. It's gotta be that. She showed the love and he was the enforcer. Yeah, but he, yeah. he that both of those things gave y'all the character Balance. that y'all have. And mm -hmm. you need that. 
because you can't have one without the other. Exactly. You need that in life. That's that balance. So I want to give a shout out to moms and pops, the Jacksons, for creating this beautiful, beautiful family for us to enjoy, to listen to this music, to be a part of their whole journey. I want to thank you, Joe and Mama Jackson. Mwah. Thank you. Come thank on, you man. So much. It ain't nothing but some love out here, man. It's the GGN News Network. Um, all right, how about this? God, all eyes on me. <laughs> I'm just <laughs> left, that's my left. That's, that's right. right. This, dude, that's left. This is my left hand going left. Oh my God, and are you fucking kidding me right now? Am I wrong as fuck? <laughs> right is that way. You guys are making a fool of me. Was it fun putting that torture album together? Yeah, yeah, torture, we did that during the Victory Tour. And um, Jackie wrote it in... That was a beautiful record. I was yeah. playing Little League football, and I, I remember really? that distinctively, like to see y'all back dun, together, dun, and just dun. to hear the way y'all sounded on that record, that was like, that was a treat for us to say that Thank they you. got back together again. Thank you. Well, we were, we were very excited during the Victory Tour, because when we came to Dodger Stadium, the record for the for Dodger Stadium Attendance. was 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 two nights sold out by by the BGs. We did seven nights. We did a week. But I enjoyed that tour because that gave us we were together. Put that unity back on y'all. Yeah. It forced y'all to be brothers right. again. Yeah. Regardless and of the fame. Exactly. Michael had our thriller and we were just out. But there it brought just him back it. to Yeah. The birth. This yeah. is the creation, man, my brothers. And if right. we felt at home right there. And I always love seeing that when he could break down and come back exactly. to the brothers. Exactly. Because y'all definitely was his inspiration before he became. Thank he was you. the baby brother. Thank you. And I got Thank kids, you. so I understand how the baby brother is inspired by the big brother. Mm -hmm. Even if he becomes good as or better than, it's always that inspiration that he sees. He has to see it first to even imagine that. I'm glad you're saying that because a lot of people, they want to forget, but the Jackson Five, it's what gave Michael and Janet the platform to do what they did. And the Jackson Five, to this day, there's no other act in the history of the business that was unknown and came out with four number one records in a row, knocked the Beatles out of number one spot twice, and never had a Grammy. Y'all didn't never win no Grammy? Never won a Grammy well, ever. me neither. So <laughs> we, we share something yeah, in common. Yeah, yeah. We yeah. share something. I'm not going to say it right, right now, but when he leave, I'm going to tell y'all how I feel about the Grammys. I'm going to stay real professional. But you see how y'all play games? Y'all play too much. How much of the Jackson legacy is untold? Like, what's, what's, what's untold that you want to tell that, that people need to know about? Well, what's untold is uh, pretty much that we love each other and, and we feel each other all the time. It's, it's just the business has created so much of uh, us having to go here, like I had a solo co career, Janet, Michael, and then there is there is the Jacksons, and so we're always in different places. It's very we find it hard to all be in one place at the same time. Mm. We have family day where we all come together, but there's always something going on that either one member is there or one is not. So it's very rare that we get together all at the same time. We still have functions. My mother have. The, the barbecues and this. It's yeah, when Mama called, don't nobody say no. No, no, she's I'm like, we're playing. But um, but what I would like to see is, is is that the people know the truth. That's why I wrote this book. And the book people is titled. Book. What is the book title? The book is titled "You're Not Alone, Michael Through a Brother's Eyes," hmm. and 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 pretty much, um, just just to share with you, um, my wife and I were on. Um, the other side of town, we got a call from Larry King saying, Jermaine, do you know anything about Michael being rushed to the hospital? And we said, no. So 45 minutes had gone by, so I'd spoken to Janet. Janet called me, and she said, what's going on? And I said, I really don't know, but I'm going to find out. And then I spoke to an attorney named Joel Katz, who said that I hear it's pretty bad. So then I called my mother back, and she she uh, says she's on her way to the hospital right then and there. So we're waiting and waiting, and then Halim and I were in Azusa on, on the other side of Pasadena. So we had to like come way, way across. So I called my mother back, and to hear her say in her voice that he's dead, I couldn't believe it. She, to hear that from her say he's dead, 
So we rushed across town. We were crying, and, and as we got closer to Westwood, the helicopters were all in the air flying, flying around, and the people were all out in the streets everywhere. And I had just a big lump in my chest because I couldn't believe it. So we get in the hospital, they, they let me through, and I rush down the hall, and I go straight to my mother. She's sitting at a table just like this, but much, much bigger, and she's just looking and staring in this space, and she had on the glasses, so I hugged her. And so Randy and I, we met in the bathroom and we said, who did this? Somebody did this. So we walked down the hallway and they say he's in the room down the hall. And we walk in there and there was a, a little door you walked through. Then there was a smaller room and he was laying there lifeless. And to see your brother laying there lifeless, his skin was still soft. And I touched him, I pulled his eye balls back and, and it was just very, very tough. And so. When I left him, I came back to where my mother was and I sat on the other side of the table. In walks Dr. Conrad Murray. And I didn't know who he was, but I said, something's funny about this man, the way he was acting. And, and uh, so from that point on, they asked me to read the time of death and everything. That was the most toughest thing that I ever man, had I to do. Man, I want to commend you for that, uh, yeah. Jermaine, because yeah. I've been through some tough situations like that and to be able to compose yourself to speak to hold your emotions back, man. I, I commend you for that, man, because I know how hard that is. And, you know, that was your brother. I mean, we loved him from a distance. You yeah. had a chance to love him up close, so. No, it, it was one of those things where you have to, like, really read the time of death and what happened, and we still don't know what really happened. All we know is that um, I feel, my personal feelings is, I feel that the doctor's just the finger to a bigger hand. Mm -hmm. There's more involved. And, and because to, to kill Michael Jackson and only get two years and you're out, that's unheard of. But, mm -hmm. but we, know just, under, we know and understand it was a plan before that. Yeah, yeah. They was trying to get rid of him yeah. ahead of time. And yeah. I just love the fact that the family stood with him, mama stood with him. And, Thank you. And I, I love the fact that even after the fact that the boy that lied on him right. came, came out. forth. Yeah, and, and say he never did it. You understand me? It goes me? to show you all that was about money yeah. and extortion. And, and, and we need to know that as entertainers with this color skin on our face that as high as we get, they're going to always want to pull us down. Right. So we must stay family and stay rooted to the people who love us the most and who really there for us. Exactly. So and when it go together. bad, you still got the people in your corner. What was so strange, though, is it's like we're in court during that trial, that last uh, false allegations of child molestation against my brother. And I wrote in this book that I didn't feel that my brother was going to get a fair trial. So I had a plan to get him out of the country. Out of the country. Hello. Out of the Hello. Co country if it Hel wasn't. Excuse me. Real nigga moment. Yeah. 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 So, 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 no, be, because I felt that, first of all, child services had cleared him on everything. Why was there a trial? Why was there even a trial? They had cleared him on everything. Child services is first step yeah, to right, the case. Right. So if they clear you, there's no case. Right. And that's what they were accusing him of. It was more than that. They were trying to break him down and shame him and this and that. And, and, and so I had or, arranged to have a plane that was there. I ain't going to say Saudi where. Arabia, something, yeah, you know, somewhere where they love us. That's where it was. Where they love that's us. Where, we where y'all Americans, ain't nothing happening. We yeah. over here. Yeah. And, and uh, so what I did was I prayed and I trusted Allah to really give him a fair trial. And I saw things were going right. But what happened was we were never, as a whole family, allowed in the courthouse. Mm. You only Bits saw and pieces. I seen that. six seats because they don't want to show the strength the of the family there all the time. So I wrote this book to let them know who he was and who this family is. This and I got the first copy of the book. This is for you. I, I present this to you on behalf of the, the family and Michael, who he was. We love you. And I love y'all. He loved you. And uh, this is the true documentation on who he was and who this family really is. And this is for you. This is beautiful, man. Okay. I, I try to pattern my family around y'all, man, on some real talk. Like, try to keep them all Thank working you. hard. And, trying to be successful and finding their own lane, but stay family at all times. It's very tough, especially out here or in any place when people want to come around you for the wrong reason. That's mm -hmm. why you keep people around you who were there before, the true friends. It's That's not beautiful. about the money, it's about the heart who care. Thank at the you. end of the day, it's all Thank about you. family. Thank you.
And I, I'm, I'm so honored to have you on the show today, all of the people out here that's watching. This is the one and only Jermaine Jackson. And he's got this new water right here. Vita. Yeah, this Vita water right here saving lives, man. They got that alkaline in it, man. I know about it, man. This is yeah. some of that stuff that cures cancer. And yeah, yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I want to thank my guests, my family member, my big brother, Jermaine Jackson, for stopping by, sharing his beautiful book that is out right now that you guys can go purchase. You are not alone. Through From, a brother's eyes. Yes, sir. The truth story. And you can go get you some of this Vito water so you can protect yourself and keep your insides looking right so you can look good on the outside. <laughs> I love you know that. Saying? You got to do it, though, I right? I love that. In a real way. Church. Preach. Tabernacle.